Um, I don't think school necessarily prepared me to be independent. In fact, I think had I not pursued other interests, it would have encouraged me to be less independent. Um, I think the way that our school system works is really old-fashioned. It puts us all on this like assembly line where we're expected to be at the same rate as each other and do the same things that everyone else is doing. And that's not how life is at all. <laughs> Currently in the state of Minnesota, the high school graduation rate is 77% of all students, 56% of people with disabilities, 52% of people with limited English skills, and 58% of people with economic troubles. This is with the current curriculum, which in most high schools includes science, math, social studies, and English classes for four years, plus credits in a foreign language, physical education, health, and fine arts. The problem is there is no mandated curriculum city, state, or nationwide. Nate Danforth, Kevin Nash, Olivia Truesdale, and I came up with an idea addressing our concerns about the school's methods for teaching us about life and preparing us for jobs. We believe that schools should be teaching us more than the current educational standards. We believe that a different set of standards, including classes whose purpose is to teach us important life skills, like filing taxes, getting insurance, applying for jobs, buying a car and house, cooking, driving, creating a credit card account, and other things. We propose that schools start teaching life skills in middle school and then, and then continue on in high school. We pick a specialization path based on what we want to do after high school. This is the current system. You start in elementary, then continue into middle school and learn more and build off of that knowledge in high school. Next, in college, you digress from what you were learning before and go into a specialized education. And from there, you go into your career. Now, for our idea, you get to elementary and middle school, you learn the same topics as they teach currently, but in middle school, there are life skills classes integrated into the curriculum. Next, in high school, you are first to choose a specialized class path based on the job you want as an adult. That way, you won't need as much expensive college schooling because you started your specialized education earlier, which causes less personal debt and you can start your job sooner. What do I do for a living? I work for the federal courts, I'm in the bankruptcy court, and I'm in accounting. I work for a healthcare services company as a national account manager. I'm a software engineer. I work as a server. I am an aspiring midwife, so I'm working towards doing that, but I make money by being a server. <laughs> what I do for a living is I'm a project coordinator for Fairview Health Services, and I'm also a part-time church musician. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm an artist and a teacher. First one, how did school prepare me for uh, my career? Uh, it actually didn't prepare me very well. I think what it gave me was uh, organizational skills uh, that I needed to, to have to succeed when my job required me to be organized. Uh, school prepared me to, uh, to read and write and to think for myself and to be critical in my thinking but my life skills I learned just living and observing. As far as uh, learning practical things in school I, I don't think that they're really good at teaching people how to file taxes or to buy a house or obtain insurance or any of those life skill things. It didn't prepare me prepared me very little. I agree with that. I think classes, it wouldn't necessarily have to be one class with a certain topic, but I think that the way classes are taught um, could be changed that would have helped. For example, kind of giving students more freedom to choose what they're learning about, to decide what they're actually interested in and what's relevant to them. Um, I've taken some classes that allowed me to do that and the way that the classroom operated was totally different. It um, 
the dynamic between the students and the teacher and what we were learning was like a hundred times better than a typical classroom where you sit there watching a teacher teach you about things that you don't care about. Um, I think just the style of the classroom being different facilitates the type of learning that we should be getting. Yes, I think so. I think uh, uh, young people must be uh, taught um, what makes, what economy is all about. Uh, money, yes. How it is, how it affects, our spending affects uh, other people and uh, how we earn it. I'm not good at science and I thought, my, my eyes would glaze over and I thought, why am I doing sciences right now when I know I'm not going to be a scientist? I think it would have been helpful to have a class about just practical considerations. Everyday, yes, everyday, everyday living. living, like you say, insurance, how to buy a house, how to get a credit card, you know, just life skills. Life, yeah, skills. life skills. Yes, it would have been very helpful. Alright, to me it feels like high schools are making a lot of promises and some of them are not being kept. at some high school websites and came across some examples of these promises. Now, are these schools really teaching us these things? Because most of the time, they're not required life skills. Basically, the self-esteem movement was a movement in hopes that if we encourage our children that, yes, everyone's a winner, Yes, you did your best. You should have no regrets. You'll do better next time. Don't worry. That that would give them better self-esteem and allow them to do better in sports and education, giving them higher grades and whatnot. However, this somewhat was not the case, for this didn't just give them higher self-esteem, but it gave them an unneeded ego boost in what would set them up to be unpreparation for failure. They were unprepared to fail, in other words. If you gave a kid an F, he'd think, well, why did I fail? I did my best. I shouldn't have failed. I mean, one joke you can use is, you used to be able to tell your kid, Tommy, you lost. You're a loser. Nowadays, they expect a trophy for it. They even have a trophy, like, most improved. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a trophy for best hustle, honestly. Integrity, confidence, responsibility, independence. The problem that I'm having, or that pretty much I don't understand, is the fact that schools don't really teach you how to grow those skills. I know they say it usually comes naturally, but how do you learn how to cook, clean, pay your taxes, insurance, or things like that if schools don't teach you? I mean, yeah, you learn it from your parents, but what happens if they're not there to teach you? What happens when you're outside of the school and there's nobody else there to help you out? Anybody who's been to college or even thought about it knows that college isn't cheap. It can cost tens of thousands of dollars yearly. Why attend over two years of college when you can start class specialization early in high school, for example? It'll save you a lot of debt. Do you know that Finland has some of the best schools in the world? The U.S. isn't even close to what they're doing in some categories. Their high school graduation rate is 93%. Pretty good, right? There are 12 students in a class. The only standardized test they take in Finland is when the students are 16. The average recess time is 75 minutes a day. Wish I had that. There is hardly any homework even until you are a teenager. Teachers are required to have a master's degree and they are, highly, and they are regarded just as highly as doctors and or lawyers. In summary, what we're trying to say here is that schools aren't doing a very good job of keeping us involved in learning what's important. We came up with an idea that integrates learning life skills and specialized education into middle 
and high school. We hope that you parents and students out there will try to stand up for yourselves and try to get some educational standards changed. If all of us continue to work toward the school, maybe students will gain better and maybe less expensive educations that will boost their confidence and capabilities in the real world.